So I wanted to make a video as a roundup of month one out of 12 on my traveling journey. So far on my East Coast trip, I have visited Melbourne, Sydney and Byron Bay and have been absolutely fascinated by how different the cities and towns are along the way. Melbourne was a great first destination for me and I can see why it was voted the world's most livable city. It has a popular nightlife scene which is really busy, loads of different attractions and also great chill out spots if you want to briefly get away from the city life. So the first hostel I stayed in was Village, um, pretty affordable, clean, fairly good communal area and the people in there were just fantastic, I made some really good friends. I then moved on to Flinders which is nearer to the central station so it's a lot more busier down there. Um, this hostel was absolutely crazy. I remember as a solo backpacker, I walked through the front door and the reception's right in front of you and the kitchen's to the left. So there's cooking, people drinking, eating, checking in. It was crazy, but nevertheless, it was a fantastic experience. So I ended up spending about a week in Melbourne, which was plenty of time, and I ended up just enjoying the city life because I ended up doing most attractions. Oh, and I won't forget, if you're in Melbourne during the Holy Festival, make sure you go to it. <laughs> I was then ready to move on to Sydney, which I wasn't really sure how I was going to get there. I heard a lot about the Greyhound buses, but after looking online, I realised that a one-way was around $300, and a flight was only $100, which didn't really make much sense to me. So as you do, I went for the cheapest option and chose the flight. The only problem is, with the flight, you have to throw away all the shampoos, all the deodorants, and everything else which you bought. Whereas with the Greyhound bus, you can take it on board with you, which is such a bonus to be able to do that. So the flight was around an hour and a half. Uh, it went pretty quick, but as I said, I had to throw away all the shampoos and everything I bought. And when you're backpacking, you want to save as much money as possible. <laughs> but it was good. It was a quick way to get there. So I landed, I got to the train station, walked out, went to the hostel, and straight away, as soon as I went into the room, I made my first friend, which was absolutely amazing, to be honest, because I was on my own. <laughs> and if you are looking to book hostels in advance, don't always trust the reviews. So this is the hostel I'm going to, Sydney Backpackers. I'm just looking at the reviews. And uh, someone's put, if you like, comfy run. Two and a half stars. But um, the thing is, with these hostels, usually you meet the best people there because they're so cheap. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. And oh boy, was I right. He then invited me downstairs to have some drinks with his friends. So straight away, it was a good icebreaker. We ended up playing poker, which I've never actually played before. So I lost money. So that was a good start. But the people who I did meet, we ended up all going out. And it was so good because I actually had things to do with certain people when I chose to. That was the main thing. I was super impressed with how different Sydney was to Melbourne, considering they're both main cities and not too far away from each other. I'd have walked through the Botanic Gardens, which I highly recommend. It's a great walk and it's just something special about walking with nature, it's just so relaxing. This walk then leads to the famous Opera House, which is fantastic to see in person. The architecture is absolutely fantastic, and it's definitely a memory which will last forever. As well in Sydney, of course, you've got the museums, you've got the art galleries, and it's generally just a nice place just to walk around. You've got all the shops and everything as well. But my favourite part was definitely the nightlife. There's um, a club called Ivy, which everyone goes to, and it's got like a pool, a swimming pool upstairs where they do like a pool party. And downstairs, it's like a rave. It's fantastic. If you go, definitely go to the Ivy. So while I was in Sydney, I chose to speak to a travel company to help me plan my trip. And what they do, they sit down with you and they just plan out everything which you want to do. 
try and book it in different slots and work everything else around it. So the three main things are Fraser Island, Whit Sundays, and Magnetic Island, and then everything else in between can sort of fit to suit. But these are the main ones which you need to usually book about a month in advance. I was quite lucky with my bookings. I had a few cancellations, so it was all able to get booked in within uh, like a month ahead to be able to get like some of the islands in a couple of weeks' time. So I was very fortunate for that. So I also asked them about the Greyhound bus because I felt like that was the best way of transport. And they actually told me that the Greyhound bus tickets, when you book a one-way, they overinflate the prices when the buses start getting booked up. And they actually bring the prices up as high as the 30-day pass, which makes literally no sense. But I wish I knew it in Melbourne. So if you are doing your East Coast trip, make sure you get the 30-day pass because... It'll, it'll work out cheaper than getting flights or booking a one-way ticket as long as you're able to plan your trip within that 30 days, which a lot of people do the East Coast within about four weeks anyway. So it's well well achievable. And then I arrived in my favourite location yet, Byron Bay. It is phenomenal. It's so much better than what I've ever experienced before in my whole life, mainly because of the vibe, the culture. Everyone's so laid back and people just want to surf all the time people walk around barefooted it's such an experience to go there so if it's not on your list at the minute definitely get it on your list because you can't miss it it is brilliant and as well one very important thing is that you have the chance to see my favorite animal which i've been hunting for for so long I very much hope I see one. I've been searching for two weeks for a koala. <laughs> but I'm, I've never seen a sign like that, so maybe, maybe I'll see one somewhere. Okay, I've searched high and low and I did not see any koalas. I'm still looking, but there's a chance that you'll see one. With signs like that, there's a high possibility. So if you do go here, just keep your eyes peeled and potentially you might see one. And there we have it, my East Coast trip so far, and I've got so much more to do, which I'm so excited to show you guys. If you've got any questions or want any advice about anything which I've done so far, please let me know in the comments below. And if it's okay, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much. Until next time, peace.